What's going on guys? It's Modern and today we're going to be doing another episode of Road to the Top. Uh, now I have made a couple changes to the team and if you're wondering why I haven't posted in a few days, it's just been because uh, I've been a little busy. I've been dealing with uh, obviously stuff like Thanksgiving, uh, holidays are starting up and stuff so it's been getting in the way of uh, recording or rather I haven't had time to record at all. So since that's finally over, uh, I'm going to be able to record a little bit more consistently. Obviously once uh, Christmas and stuff comes around, that'll be another thing getting in the way. But anyways, uh, yeah, let's get back to the Road to the Top episode. Um, I've made a couple of changes to the team. I have yet to update the Eevee spreads of these Pokemon, but I've changed around Cresselia and Aegislash a little bit. Uh, originally, Cresselia had Rocky Helmet and Aegislash had Weakness Policy, but I wanted to go for a little bit more, uh, I wouldn't say non-standard choices. I think, I think Rocky Helmet didn't make very much sense on my Cresselia since it's more offensive, so I switched it over to Expert Belt. And then Aegislash had a lot of problems with Amoongus, and I never really had chances to activate Weakness Policy, especially since it's a faster build, so I just decided to go and put Lumberry on it. Uh, helps it switch into some burns and stuff from Rotoms. Uh, and it also stops annoying Swaggers from Thunderous, which a lot of people actually use to beat Aegislash. Um, so yeah, helps out a lot with a couple of things that the team had issues with, and I think it'll have a lot of uh, good benefits for the team. So we're going to go and start up. Oh, and the other thing I was going to say is that um, uh, on Thanksgiving one of my nephews actually played on my DS, so they dropped my rating a little bit, and I needed to get it back up a little bit. So we're about to where I was in the lap last episode. First opponent's going to be from British Columbia, 1560 rating. Pretty standard team right here. Kangaskhan, Azumarill, Landorus, Charizard, Cresselia, and Thunderous. So definitely a really standard team right here. Uh, the only difference between a standard Kangaskhan, Azumarill is, of course, the Charizard. Uh, I guess they just wanted the dual mega option, maybe fearing Amoongus a little bit with the team since their only real good way to deal with it is either Kangaskhan's new excuse me, uh, neutral attacks and Cresselia's Psychic. Um, looks like Swampert's going to be pretty good for this match. Uh, my team actually has a really nice matchup against Azumarill as well just because Virizion's really good against it. And really, the only Pokemon that Virizion doesn't like facing on this team right here is Cresselia. And I guess Thunderous after a Thunder Wave, but that shouldn't be too big of an issue. Um, usually against this sort of lead, I like to lead... Or against this sort of team, I like to lead Virizion just because it's so good against Azumarill. And it forces Kangaskhan to fake out Virizion. Uh, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to lead Arcanine just to be a little safer against something like Thunderous. Actually, I'll go Swampert. Uh, the question is, what do I go for for my other Pokemon? Because if I lead Virizion and he leads Kangaskhan, Azumarill, or something along those lines, then they pretty much have to go for the Fake Out, and that just lets me get a free switch. Um, but I think what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go Thunderous Virizion. It threatens Kangaskhan, Azumarill, and pretty much any combination they can lead with. Um... Swampert's definitely really good here, and I think Aegislash is also really good. Arcanine can go for a bunch of Will-O-Wisps and stuff, uh, but it doesn't really do anything against the Charizard, barring Snarl. And it doesn't really like facing off against Azumarill, even though it can get the burn. And I'd rather go for the more offensive strategy here than the defensive. Uh, usually, I rely on the defensive part of my team to take out the more bulky Pokemon like Cresselia. But uh, in this case, since it's an offensive team or just sort of a standard team, uh, I just want to put off a lot of pressure straight from the beginning. Let's see, they lead Charizard and Thunderous, which is going to be pretty threatening for me right here. Now, question is, if my opponent right here, because the most obvious play I see from my opponent is just protecting and thunderwaving Virizion. Uh, if they are on offensive Thunderous, they could double up into my own, which would be a very big issue for me. Now, alternatively, what I could do right here is I could set up the Rain Dance and then bring in Swampert, which I think is actually what I'm going to do. Uh, just because it counters the Rain, or uh, sorry, the Sun if my opponent decides to Mega Evolve. And then if my opponent goes for a uh, Fire Attack, it's not going to do as much damage. And then also make sure if they Thunder Wave that slot, nothing gets hit by that. 
And they do Mega Evolve, so this is going to be good for me. Let's see if it's Charizard X. But no, it's going to be Y. Makes a lot more sense for their team. Alright, Charizard sets up the Drought. Uh, now, if he doesn't outspeed me and uh, has a taunt right here, then I can just get the Rain Dance off for free, which is what I'm hoping. Okay, and I do outspeed. So my opponent's not going to be able to outspeed and taunt me, which is one of the reasons I run a very fast Thunderous. Oh, and they actually go for a Swagger onto my own Thunderous. Okay. Um, I'm fine with that play right there. It's better than... I, I mean, it's not the best play by my opponent. They could have just gone for a Thunderbolt, honestly. But if I really wanted to, I could just switch out. I mean, do I really want to switch out right here? Uh, I could see an Azumarill or something coming in, but I don't want to give my opponent a chance to Thunder Wave. Um, I think what I'm going to do right here is I'm just going to Waterfall. I'm actually, I'm going to double up into this Thunderous right here. Yeah, because they're probably going to withdraw into uh, Cresselia, I'd assume. No, into Azumarill. Okay, so they're risking getting Thunderbolted. That's honestly a really interesting play right there. I, I don't see why they would risk that. I mean, it would make sense if I waterfalled that slot, but Thunderbolt's a lot safer. Oh, and I hit myself in confusion, which is really unfortunate. Uh, he does go for a Thunderbolt too, so he's just doubling into the Thunderous, trying to get it, rid of it, especially since I have that Rain Dance. Uh, gonna heal back with the Citrus. I'm not really sure if Azumarill can pick up the KO with Aqua Jet, though. Which is probably my biggest issue right now. And he carries the Thunder, or the Citrus on his Thunderous as well. Another Waterfall will definitely take that out. So I need to keep that in mind. I'm gonna go and calc out real quick how much Azumarill's Aqua Jet does. It should be able to pick, out a knock, uh, pick up a Knockout right here, but I just want to play it safe. Or sorry, I I'm willing to play it a little risky. Aqua Jet does up to 90 damage. Alright, so am I willing to risk that? I don't think I am. I'm just going to switch out into Verizion and go for a Waterfall on that slot again. I hope they don't try to go for a prediction and go for play rough on that slot. Uh, I do think they would just go for an Aqua Jet in this situation. They switch out Thunderous. Let's see if it's into Charizard. Okay, and it is into Charizard. So, again, I guess they were risking to switch into a Waterfall right there. If they go for a Belly Drum, honestly, that's a really weird play for them to go for. Waterfall is going to do about 50% right here. Let's see. Goes for the Waterfall. Uh, onto the Verizion, too. So, that's fine by me. I think what I'm going to do right here is I'm just going to Stone Edge Charizard. Yeah, because I think, I think they're more threatened by the... Um, I think they're more threatened by the Swampert. So, what should I do right here? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to Leaf Blade Azumarill... Uh, if they just let me get a free switch into Thunderous, I can reset up the rain, which would be really threatening. I mean, I could double protect to be safe right here, just in case if they try to switch out. Stone Edge definitely picks up the knockout on Charizard and Azumarill right here. Um... Yeah, I'll just Leaf Blade Azumarill and Protect. And they withdraw Azumarill, so... I guess they predicted me to target down that slot with a Leaf Blade. Maybe they don't know that Verzeon runs the... Um, runs the Stone Edge, I guess? I don't see them going for a Fire-type attack right here, though. I see them going for a Solar Beam. I mean, they could go for a Fire Attack. It makes sense fi just fine. But, no, they do go for the Solar Beam. Okay, and this actually puts me in a really great position, because now I can just Stone Edge the Charizard. Actually, I want to make sure, because I don't think anybody, uh, any other attack would 
knock them out, but let's see, close combat does about 50%. I don't think it's worth risking, though, because this is on a Charizard with zero, um... What is it? A Charizard with zero defenses. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to Stone Edge and Ice Punch right here. And they go for a Swagger on a Virizion? No, on a Swampert! Okay. I'm fine with that play. If they Swaggered Virizion right there, then... That would have been really bad. Oh, and Stone Edge misses right here. So they're going to get the Flamethrower off right here. Going to definitely take out Virizion. So that's really unfortunate for me. That's one of the bad parts about running Stone Edge. Uh, my team really doesn't need it uh, against really anything besides, I guess, Volcarona. All right, in this next turn, I'm just going to go for a Rain Dance and a Waterfall. And I'm actually going to target down the Thunderous. Yeah, because they're just going to switch out. Again, I'm not really sure what they're trying to do right here. Because Thunderbolt's also a viable move. Especially since they're almost down. I guess they're just going to go for a Swagger right here. And hope that they can take me out. Yep, they just go for Swagger. So they're going for the Luck play. Yeah, there's, there's really nothing I can do at this point. Like, if, if they just keep going for Swagger, uh, it's just going to go down to Luck. One of the unfortunate parts about Pokemon is that luck factor, but it happens. People go for it, and... You know, sometimes it wins games, sometimes it loses games. But more often than not, feels feels like you lose games because of it. And they send out Landorus, interestingly enough, against... Thunderous and Swampert. I'm just going to Waterfall that slot and go for a Thunderbolt, I guess. And what do I have in the back? Aegislash? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I guess I'm going to trade out, or I'm going to switch out the Aegislash and go for a Waterfall. Because I'd rather conserve Thunderous since it's a lot better against this team. I could also try to conserve Swampert, but I think I'll just target down Thunderous. Because um, they're not, uh, in my opinion, my opponent's not making the most optimal plays. Uh, that's how I'm viewing it. I mean, I guess they could Waterfall. No, they go for a Play Rough into Swampert. And it doesn't pick out the Knockout, which is fine by me. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to King Shield this turn and then... Hmm. I want to see if they have Aqua Jet Azumarill. That's one of my biggest fears. I guess what I could do right here... No, they have Flamethrower. They, they showed the Flamethrower. I'm going to go for a King Shield with Aegislash. And a Waterfall into Charizard. Yeah, they if they add Heat Wave, I guess they could go for it. I'm not going to risk that, though. They go for the Flamethrower. Waterfall right here. Probably not going to pick up a knockout after an Intimidate. It might, though. Oh, and it picks it up. Okay. So, I guess I got a low roll the first time around. Um, like I said, though, it made sense for my opponent to go for the single target on Aegislash. If they had Heat Wave, then I would have just lost Swampert. And, really, I could just go for the Thunderbolt and maybe even double up into the Azumarill, predicting a Protect from Charizard. Uh, but I pretty much had that game locked up. I mean, if I hit that Stone Edge, it was pretty much over anyway, but my team has a really good matchup against Charizard, so it's very difficult for me to lose. We're just going to Shadow Ball, Thunderbolt, should be able to pick up a Knockout, or at least get fairly close. They could be an Assault Vest build, and yeah, they actually are. I was going to say, they could be an Assault Vest build just because they were running the Waterfall, uh, which usually you don't see on Azumarill. Usually it's Aqua Jet and Play Rough slash Knock Off slash Return, something like that. Uh, 
those other moves just so you can hit Amoongus. But yeah, Waterfall is usually a good indicator that uh, your opponent is going to be um, an Assault Vest variant. Let's see. King Shield goes off. Probably just going to protect or knock off. Okay, and it drops their attack. Uh, I was just doing that just to go for a safe play, just in case if they outsped me. And I had something like that knock off, because if they could KO me, that, <laughs> that I would lose. That would be bad. <laughs> the Shadow Ball goes off, and I win. So that game, uh, yeah, it, it did go on a lot longer than it probably should have. Um, like I said, if I hit that Stone Edge, it was pretty much over anyway. Just because they had no good way to take out the Swampert, that's one of the reasons why this team is so good against Charizard is because you can just keep resetting the rain. And, um, yeah, Charizard really can't do anything against the team. It's also really effective with Aegislash since a lot of them rely on Cresselia. Or at least a lot of them choose to rely on Cresselia. We're going to be going into the second game of the episode for today. 1598, so if we do win, we're going to break the 1600s guaranteed right here. A uh, little bit unfortunate that, my, like I said, my nephew went on and played on here. <laughs> but uh, it doesn't really matter. It's battle spot. It's not like it's an actual event. Uh, going to be facing an opponent, opponent named Wall this episode with a very VGC 14 team right here. Uh... Hmm. Verizion's pretty good right here against the Kangaskhan and Rotom. I think it's going to be necessary for me to bring it. Um. I think Swampert's also really good here, too. So I could go with something like Swampert Thunderous. Just because it threatens the Talonflame right off the bat. And I'm honestly not too scared of Rotom with my team, just because Verizion and Thunderous can do a lot of damage to it, and it relies on Hydro Pump against uh, Thunderous most of the time. Now, Aegislash Slash could be pretty good here. I am a bit afraid of the... Um, I am a bit afraid of his Talonflame, though, so I will need to outplay that. I could actually lead Arcanine if I wanted to, but I'm, I'm a little afraid of the Rotom lead. So the question is, what do I bring in the back? If I bring Verizion, I'm weaker to Aegislash. If I bring Aegislash, I'm a little bit weaker to Greninja, it feels like. I don't know. Ar I I'm 50-50 I'm on bringing Swamper. It's good against pretty much his entire team. Just in general, everything except the Rotom. But, I don't know, Verizion seems a little necessary for this match. And Cresselia is good too. I'm just going to go with Verizion and Aegislash. Because Arcanine, it can get Intimidate off on the Garchomp, uh, Talonflame, and the Kangaskhan. But... It, it still takes a lot of damage from Kangaskhan, and I'm scared of the Garchomp, honestly. Even though I do have a lot of answers for it, I think my opponent might bring that, especially if they're like a Tailwind team. And they lead Kangaskhan Rotom, so they did lead what I was fearing with the Rotom, uh, which is completely fine. I think what I'm going to do right here is just protect Swampert and switch into Aegislash. Reason being is that they're probably going to go for a Fake Out onto Thunderous and then possibly a Will-O-Wisp onto Swampert. Uh, that would make the most sense to me. And I don't want to switch Verizion into a potential Will-O-Wisp. So let's see what my opponent goes for right here. The mic, like, gets in the way. I need, I need to, uh, uh my friend down the street has a really nice mic that I could borrow. I probably should go and borrow that. Alright, they're taking a while to choose their moves. It's a pretty obvious play for this first turn. Because Swampert's a threat. You want to burn that. And if they burn the Aegislash, I do have Lumberry. 
I mean, they could double into Swampert or Thunderous with just regular attacks. That would be fine too, but I would try to burn the Swampert if I were my opponent. Let's see, they Mega Evolve, so they're not going to be able to hit me with Scrappy. Let's see, Rotom goes for a Protect, so maybe they're just going straight for like a Power-Up Punch. I'm not really sure. But Aegislash is going to come in for free right here. Okay, and they just go for a Fake Out and Aegislash, so not really sure what the Rotom was doing right there, honestly. Alright, and do I want to just target down the Kangaskhan? They could potentially switch Aegislash in, but I'm not really too worried about that. I don't know, I definitely think he's going for a Will-O-Wisp right here, but uh, Swampert's still really good against half of his team still like it can still almost one hit KO the Talon Flame. Yeah, I'm just going to double into Kangaskhan. And just waterfall flash cannon. Earthquake Kangaskhan. <laughs> okay, um I'm assuming we're facing a singles player right here. Rotom actually outspeeds. What? And they go for a Will-O-Wisp onto Aegislash. So this is, from what I'm seeing, this is a singles player right here. Just because they have a fast Rotom with Will-O-Wisp, they Will-O-Wisp in Aegislash, which is normally special in VGC. Although in uh, singles, it is actually... Or, uh, sorry. Uh, the Kangaskhan in singles also runs Earthquake for a lot of uh, threats. So I guess what I'm going to do is I'm just going to Waterfall King and King Shield, I guess. I, I'm not really sure. I mean, they're obviously, they're either going to attack Swampert right here. They could just double attack Swampert. I want to protect Aegislash, though, because I don't know. Because they just revealed Earthquake. They're really targeting down the Aegislash in this situation. And from the look of it, the Kangaskhan isn't actually super, super offensive either. Okay, and they withdraw Kang probably into their own Aegislash, I'd assume. Okay, that's fine with me. My Aegislash is faster right here, and this will knock it into a Shadow Ball range, which is really nice. If they go for a Will-O-Wisp, that's completely fine. Okay, and this, they just will with Swampert, so that's really fine by me. Let's see, they are the Leftovers variant. Um, can't really do anything to Rotom in this situation. Although, I don't want to switch Virizion into an attack, though. I don't know, he wouldn't Will-O-Wisp the same spot twice. I'm just going to switch in Virizion and go for a Shadow Ball and Aegislash. Because theoretically I should be able to outspeed his Aegislash. Not many people run Aegislash as fast as me. Um, and if he does protect, then that's completely fine. Goes for a Will-O-Wisp into the Aegislash, so that's completely fine. Let's see if I outspeed them right there. Or right here. Okay, and we do. Let's see if we can pick up the Knockout. Alright, and they're probably going to survive. They do. Oh, but they go for a Substitute, and I survive. Ooh. Okay. I'm fine with that. Oh, you know what? I just realized, uh, for the Aegislash, I was saying this at the beginning of the video, but I didn't uh, finish my idea, or my uh, thought. But, for Aegislashes, um, or for my Aegislash, if I was the spread that I was planning on using, then that would have picked up the knockout. But, this is a lot bulkier spread right here. 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to protect Verizion, go for a Shadow Ball onto Rotom. Because I want to walk, I, I want to knock his Rotom into a Shadow Ball range. And if he targets down Aegislash, it probably can't take it out right here. And he does just protect with his Aegislash, which is completely fine by me. Uh, Rotom's going to go for another Will-O-Wisp, so this is exactly what I predicted right here. Uh, they could have gone for an attack on an Aegislash, but I think it was safer for them to go for that play anyway, which is what I was aiming for. And Leaf Blade should be able to pick up the knockout on his Rotom. And I'm just going to count that out just to make sure. Uh... Because I don't know all the calcs for this team. Yeah, and Leaf Blade definitely KOs right here. Unless they're like super physically bulky, but no one runs that. So we're going to go for a Leaf Blade onto Rotom. Shadow Ball into Aegislash. And this match should be wrapped up right here. If they swap in Kangaskhan, so be it. Um, I mean, Verizion can still take it out. I can just double protect and pretty much win from this point. They do switch into Kangaskhan. No, they switch into Garchomp. So I'm going to get a free Shadow Ball off right here. And they don't protect with Rotom, so that's going to go down. <laughs> now, if that if that was a Landorus, um, that might have helped them out. Because that would have intimidated Verizion. They could have gone for a Will-O-Wisp. And this would be Assault Vest. Garchomp. Or uh, Assault Vest Landorus. Okay, and Aegislash is pretty much dead right here. I might honestly just attack with it and sack it to an Earthquake. If they bring in Kang, I'm just going to protect. Okay, and Garchomp is most likely... Yeah, no, I'm not even going to judge this Garchomp. It's in close combat range. There's no way it doesn't get KO'd by that. Fifty nine to seventy one percent, and they are definitely <laughs> not at fifty nine percent. Alright, I can close combat Garchomp. Shadow Ball the Aegislash, and if they protect, that's fine. Um, if Aegislash has Shadow Sneak or something weird right here, they could potentially pick up a knockout. But they do just go for the King Shield, so this game's pretty much wrapped up. Uh, nothing my opponent can really do right here. They could switch out the Aegislash into Kang, which is a little bit scary, but even then I still don't care. I don't know, they could swap into Kang right here. It might be worth going for that play. I don't know. Kang is within range of pretty much everything. And Thunderous and Swamper can take out the Aegislash from here. Okay, and they don't switch out. I just go for the safe play right here. There's really nothing I can do. Or nothing my opponent can do that could uh, give them a chance to win at this point. Because like I said, if they switch out their Aegislash to uh, just run the burn on mine to get the KO, uh, I have enough Pokemon that can take out. I, I actually think Thunderbolt could take out the Kangaskhan from this range too. I do get a critical hit, but it didn't matter at that point, uh, just from the damage we saw earlier. And yeah, this game's over. Um, I just have to bring in Swampert, double protect, and go for the close combat for the knockout. Oh, and sorry if my voice has been a little hoarse for these first few episodes. Um, I actually work at McDonald's, and uh, talking takes a toll on your on your vocal cords. Especially when you do it for eight hours at a time. It, it, it definitely takes a toll on you. And my opponent forfeits. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be two wins for this third episode of Road to the Top. Um, 
I mean, they, it, pretty standard teams that we saw. Uh, my opponent in the first match was making some pretty weird plays, and I definitely think my opponent in the second match could have made some better plays, but nevertheless, we won two. Uh, as always, guys, if you liked the video, please go leave a like. I appreciate it a lot. If you haven't gone and done it yet, go and hit subscribe. Make sure that you get all the videos when they come out, and also check out my, show, my social media, uh, Twitter, and eventually I'll do Facebook, uh, but I also have Twitch if you want to go and check that out, because I will be planning on... Uh, setting up a streaming schedule at some point. Uh, probably thinking about like three days a week or something. So, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. And as always, have a nice day.